just because you declare it. See, what's happening is the world has crept into the church this uh, 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 type of thought process, which is uh, new age, uh, projection kind of mess. That stuff is easy to do, but it's, it's empty. It's void. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's, it doesn't work. It makes you feel good. It makes you think that you're walking in victory. And what that does for the child of God is, is it sets you up for failure. Okay? Now, does that mean that you're going to be walking on this earth and walking on this earth and not have any struggle, not have any kind of uh, issues in your life, not have any of that stuff? Everything's supposed to be unicorns and rainbows and skittles falling from the sky. Okay? That is fallacy also. That's a lie also. Matter of fact, the reason that you grow in, as a Christian is because of your struggles, because of your, your fights, your, your uh, having to change. If you could just say, if the Lord just said, Cain, I want you to be this way. And I'd say, Boop, okay, I'm good. I'm going to be just like that. That's a good start. But there's a whole lot of work between Cain now and how I how what God wants me to be. There's a lot of work. There's going to be some things I got to give up. There's going to be some things I got to understand, and you can't understand understand some things unless you win them, unless you go through a fight, a struggle. Right? That's how come we've ruined kids by giving them participation trophies when they hadn't done anything. Okay. What's the reward? What have you had to struggle for? You get the same thing as this person over here did. They tried real hard. You sat, you sat down. You didn't care because you're going to get the same exact same thing. Right. Well, and now we got people that are weak, and if you do this to them, they scare and crumble right there in front of them. Yeah. You know? So what is it? What is it? There's a lot of books about what I'm going to talk about today. There's, there's uh, some good ones out there. There's some people on the Internet. I'm on the Internet. Okay? We're on the Internet. There's some good people out there that talks about it. And then there's some charlatans that have zero idea of what they're referring to. And then there's some people that uh, says that they're Christians that use New Age thought processes and teachings, doctrines of devils, Scripture calls them, to try to bring it out there and teach Christians how to do it. And there's no power in it. There's no, there's no victory in it. What am I talking about? Spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. That's the title of my sermon today. Real spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. It is a subject to where you don't have to be a 30-year Bible scholar to be able to understand what spiritual warfare is. You can be at any level of education. You can understand what spiritual warfare is. It, you can be a novice a new believer and have an, a, a working knowledge of how to do spiritual warfare and what spiritual warfare is. It is a subject to where you can learn it, you can learn about it, you can grow in it, and if you wanted to spend the rest of your life understanding about it, you could also do that and your, your knowledge would grow and deepen. So it's a subject to where you don't have to be a master at it and understanding uh, of, of all its mechanics for it to work. See what I'm saying? You ever seen Water Boy? The movie? Yes. You know when he's like, show me what uh, the wrestler does that his favorite guy does, and he goes and he snaps the dude in the eye? Yeah. You can be a 50 year martial artist and do that to somebody, and it works. Or you can be a one day martial artist and do that to somebody, it works. You've poked somebody in the eye. It's right. going to work if they're living, <laughs> they're going to feel it. Okay? <laughs> and I do like the movie Water Boy, it's stupid. <laughs> I might see some of myself in the water, boy. Who knows? But spiritual warfare is a subject to where, like I said, you can come in it and with a good understanding like today, you can actually apply it to your life and actually start to do it and see a result out of it. You can start today and learn it for the rest of your life until Jesus returns and there's still a lot to learn. Okay? But the fact is you can do it and it can work. I want to clear over some things real quick. What is spiritual warfare? Some people would say spiritual warfare for the child of God is everything. If you are having dinner 
and you're going to pray for your food. Now look, if you're one of those people that feels the need to pray for 45 minutes over your dinner while it's cold, knock yourself out. You're not really making it any better. You can if you want to, or are you doing it to impress people? I don't know. You've got to decide. Okay? But see, Scripture says that this food is sanctified by the giving of thanks. I could have a meal in front of me and say, thank you, Father. I have acknowledged who gave it to me. And that's it. It is now holy. That food is sanctified. I can eat it. Or you could spend 45 minutes praying over it and maybe get the same results of it being sanctified. Somewhere around your prayer, a 45 minutes prayer, you start. You say, thank you, Lord. Okay? Now it's sanctified. Some people would say that's spiritual warfare. You've got to have some spiritual warfare. You've got to pray victory over that food. See what I'm saying? Now, I know that's ridiculous, but some Christians believe that's how they have to do everything they do. Some Christians believe there's no such thing as spiritual warfare. That every prayer is the same. If I'm praying for my food, okay, unless someone I know is probably actively trying to poison me, I'm going to say, Father, even still, someone's trying to poison me. You gave me a promise that, you know, that, that poison and I can pick up serpents and snakes and all that stuff. That is a metaphor for people that are trying to kill you with poisons and, and demons and so on. The spiritual warfare matters. Now, some, I, I do believe that God will certainly intervene. If someone was actively trying to poison you and you didn't know it, uh, and you say, Father, thank you in the name of Jesus, I received this food with thanksgiving and blessing, and it comes from you. Thank you, Lord. And you eat it, then God certainly has the ability to, to, to let you live through that. Wouldn't we agree? Okay. That doesn't mean pick up serpents, your snakes, and start shaking them and stuff like that. Those people that do that have a good heart, okay? Good heart, but they, they don't search what Scripture really says. And plus they're tempting the Lord. So, but now, if my child is sick, I'm not going to pray the same kind of prayer over my baby who is really bad sick as I would just say, thank you, Lord, for this food. I receive it in thanksgiving. I would come against everything that made that baby sick. I would bring that child before God in the name of Jesus per Scripture, not circumventing Scripture, not doing what somebody else has said. I'm going to learn what Scripture says and I'm going to declare it my victory and I'm going to declare that person being healed and raised up per Scripture. Okay? So when I pray fervently, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That means to give a, 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 a with all, a with your, with your, just with your whole body. That's why when you see Jewish people uh, at the welling wall, they'll be rocking because Scripture tells them that they should worship the Lord with their whole body. And so that's what they adapted, uh, adopted, saying through my prayer and stuff, you've got to rock and you've got to physically work out, uh, physically exhaust yourself. So can you see the two differences between the two needs and the two situations in prayer? Your, your baby's real bad, sick with a fever that can't be, that they've tried to give medicine and it's not working, versus your dinner. Okay, so one is going to be uh, requiring you to go into a state of warfare. The other is thanksgiving. All right, yeah. I have prayed. They're both prayers, right. but I have prayed a thanksgiving prayer over my and acknowledging God and acknowledging that He has given me this food. Now my baby's sick. I'm going to acknowledge God first and give Him thanks for who He is and what He's done, right? But my whole attitude and what I am trying to achieve, what am I trying to achieve with this prayer? Okay? So of course I'm going to come at these two things differently. And they are different. You're still praying. That is your weapon. That's, your, that's, that's how we give God praise. We praise Him. We have a mouth that prays Him. We worship Him with uplifted hands. Okay? I have a pet peeve. Now let me just tell you my pet peeve. And if I've seen people do this and they love the Lord, I got it, but here I am to teach them. I want to teach something. Somebody something. If you are in a worship service 
and 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 this is as high as you get your hands there in worship. You know what this is? You know what this represents? I can tell you what this represents. This represents give me. This is a give me. Right? I'm worshiping the Lord. This is it. And they can look in you for it. And they can be really worshiping the Lord. Just here. This is a give me. Worship is not about give me. And worship and prayer are the same. I mean, they, they're, they're, they're really close. Right? Because in order for you to pray, you've got to get in, and, and it means something, you've got to get in the presence of God. If you're going to worship God, guess what? You're going to do it in the presence of God. If you're going to work in spiritual warfare, you're going to do it in the presence of God. And if you're outside of the presence of God, you're outside of your authority. You're outside of the place you belong. You won't be able to do any kind of work in the Spirit that's going to matter to anything. You see what I'm saying? The, the Bible says lift up holy hands. Here. 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 When it comes here, this is a give me. Worship is about the Lord. All right? That's my little pet peeve. Okay? But the point of it is, is an attitude. It's an attitude. What am I trying to achieve? <clears throat> If you want your church to grow spiritually, by numbers, by whatever the case may be, you want your yard sale, uh, uh, you know, your church having a yard sale, you want your yard sale to be productive and to do something and to, to come, you, you have to do spiritual warfare to pray for it. Why is that important? Because you want everything to work and have power and achieve something, right? If I want my church to grow, guess what? I have an enemy that doesn't want my church to grow. If I want you to grow spiritually, you have an enemy. We have an enemy. Scripture declares we have an enemy that doesn't want you to grow. And I, does, I don't have this, the, the uh, authority to make him stop messing with you. I don't by myself. But when I stand on the Word of God, now I have the authority that Jesus and all of heaven has given to me. Now the enemy doesn't have the authority to go against what God wants. Right? I mean, he will fight against it. He will do everything he can to fight against it and to stop, to stop it. And he will do everything. And you are the key. You are the key. And we're going to read into this. So, when, when you pray and we say, well, we're going to do some spiritual warfare, what's the outcome and why are we praying for it? What, what's the outcome? What is the urgency? We don't need to do spiritual warfare over our food. You don't need to. But when people are sick, people have cancer, babies are sick, when uh, all of a sudden your life is going through, it's good, and then all of a sudden everything starts falling apart, then you need to stop and say, I'm under attack. I am under attack. And you, you, a prayer like, Lord, I don't know what's wrong in the name of Jesus. You've not done any spiritual warfare. You've not had any kind of... That, that's, a, that's a question. That, that's, a, that's a question. I don't know what's going on. That's a duh. Duh. That's that Greek word. Duh. Right? <laughs> duh. Yeah, obviously there's something wrong. What are you going to do about it? God's asking, what are you going to do about it? All right. Well, he's got some answers for us. Let's get into it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Chapter 6, verse 10. He says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of the evil in heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand Withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand before, stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. 
in all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance. Make supplications for all the saints. Also for me, that my words may be given to me in, open, uh, in opening my mouth, mouth boldly to proclaim the mysteries of the gospel. Now, let's go back at the top. <clears throat> this is all about a military mindset. This is all about a war, a, a war mindset. It starts off with verse 10. He starts off, he says, finally, finally, stop, listen. Listen to me. That's what he's saying. Listen. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. This is the same kind of language that you would use if you were in a foxhole or you was in a battle and your, your fellow soldier would be beside of you and, and you see their courage waning. You see them needing encouragement. And you know if their courage falls, then your courage might fall. Right? We need to all be on the same page. And that's why he was saying, look, be strong in the Lord and in His might. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. The child of God, we want to... Listen, the, the reason that the majority of the world is like it is today is because Christians didn't want to offend anybody. The reason that children are being sexualized and, 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 and all this stuff I hear in churches is because the child of God was so afraid of offending someone and hurting their feelings and being called homophobic or uh, 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 hurtful or not real. We have been, so we were so afraid of being labeled something that doesn't matter, not true. Okay? We stopped and we stepped back and we said, okay, I'm going to sit in my corner and I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. I'm gonna, and they're like, you can do what you want to in your, for, in your church. You can do whatever you want to. You just don't step outside the church and tell us anything. Well, I hate to break it to you, but that's not what Scripture says. Yes, amen. Scripture says we're to go out in the highways and the byways. We're to go out and be the salt and light into the world. That requires us to be light and salt and go past our four walls. I'm not going to let somebody tell me how to work in my house and how to be in my house. And I sure am not going to let somebody tell me how to be outside. As long as I'm not breaking any rules or laws and so on and so forth like that. Okay? So he's saying, be strong in who? The Lord. Yes. That's the very first place that the child of God has to begin in spiritual warfare. The reason I harp and I, and I fuss and I'm so against, besides it being the doctrines of devils, is that it, when you're told you're God, and when you're told you're God with a little g, and whatever you proclaim this name it, claim it, mess, then that, that changes the dynamics of authority. That you shift from believing and standing under the authority of Jesus, and you put yourself in authority. And the truth is, you don't have any authority, spiritually speaking, at all. Amen. You have zero authority. I have zero authority in the spirit realm. I have authority in my house. Any authority that I have as an as a, as a American, it comes from the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. Right? That's how come we have the right to vote. That's how come we have the right to bear arms. That's how come we have the right for free speech and so on and so forth. Those are the authorities and they say those are given to us by God. Okay, they say it. And it is. God wants men to be free. Amen. God wants men to be able to make up their mind and to protect their homes and their families. God wants these things, okay? God doesn't want slavery. If it wasn't for the, the church, slavery would still be in America. Yeah. The Christians that the world hates so much in America, the only reason there's not slavery now is because of Christians said God said that God doesn't want this to happen. The reason that Rome gave up their, their freedom is because of Christians. Not the Romans said, you know what, slavery's all wrong. 90% of their whole economic 
a structure was based off of slavery. I mean, so yeah, think about the Vikings that killed everybody, took all their lands. You know who beat them? Christianity, the gospel of peace. So we have zero authority, spiritually speaking, inside or outside of Jesus. So that is for the first, first place that the child of God has to start is there. So when I do spiritual warfare, when, I'm, when I want a situation to change, when I recognize even in myself, Lord, I, 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 let me tell you, you get in the presence of God and you say, okay, and, and God starts revealing to you what's wrong, right? Some of your own failures, some self-reflection, okay? And it's hard to do because when you look in the mirror, a clear mirror, you see yourself clearly, right? All your flaws and failures, okay? And so you say, I want these things to change too, Lord. <coughs> well, that you might have some habits that need to be broken. You need. So what does that mean? Does that mean that you're going to just passively just correct these things? No. You're going to have to make it an authority. You're going to have to make it important in your life. Have to declare, declare the Word of God. You're going to have to stand strong and stand in His Word and, and trust in the Lord and so on and pray against the enemy. Pray against things that are uh, coming against you. Maybe some friends and so on and so forth like this. So you have to stand strong in the Lord and the might, uh, His might. He said, and I'm not going to go into all the armor pieces. I've done that before. Uh, uh, we're not going to do that. I don't need to. But it says, put on the whole armor of God. Half armor, some armor, a little bit of the armor. You can. You can do that. You can put on the helmet of salvation. Well, I'm saved. What about the breastplate of righteousness? What about the, the belt of truth? What about your shoes You know, for the preparation of the gospel? What about your shield of faith? What about your sword? Which is the word of the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. What about all those things? Well, I got my hell and a salvation on. So now you're stuck thinking, oh, I'm saved, I'm good to go. Everything else, my heart gets broke all the time. Why? Well, I don't have the blessed prayer of righteousness on. I, I, I question all the time, am I a saved child of God? Why? You should have the breastplate of righteousness. Your righteousness. You are righteous by God. God has declared you are righteous. And so when God declares it, no one else and you get your uh, uh, value based off of God, then who can stand against that? If the world tells you you're not a good person because you don't agree with me. Well, let me just give you a little insight. God says that I'm good. I'm good to go. So who are you, little dirt and water? Who are you, little man, little man, little woman? Who are you to tell God that He's wrong? Because I know I'm nothing, but He said I'm something. So see, that's what the breastplate does. Okay? So you've got to put on the whole armor of God. Why? Christians think the devil, number one, ain't real. Or if they do, they scare to death of him. Ever he's under, ever under every rock in the world, ever you get a bad hamburger at wherever you shouldn't be eating anyway, and you say, that's the devil. You do construction all your life and your back's hurting as a child of God. They say, oh, the devil jumped up and kicked me in the back. <laughs> Flesh breaks down. That's what it does as you get older. But I still trust in the Lord for healing. The devil says, look, I'm not making this up. This is Scripture. <laughs> Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand, may be able to stand. Because without it, you can't stand. Yes, Child of God, this is why I say this is your birthright. This is your inheritance. This is what you have to have. Okay? So that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. There's one. He's, he's there. Yeah. And he's got schemes. He's got plans. Yes. Individually. He's got something for you to destroy you. Is it Satan, Lucifer, the devil? No, he don't know you. Ex he doesn't know you exist outside of you're a Christian. Okay, the, Lucifer, the oh the devil has come and he's attacked me. Well, who are you? I work at whoever. I'm nothing. 
The devil's busy doing messing with world leaders, but he has a structure. It's a it's a military structure. There's levels of authority, okay? And so the devil's overall general MO for you is to have scan, schemes to destroy the child of God. He, whoever he is, whatever little enemy we have, has a scheme to destroy this church. And then you can break that down. He has a scheme to destroy you in your personal life and in your personal walk. He has a scheme to make you deny Jesus in front of man so that they can have an excuse to tell you, uh, if you're a Christian, you ain't no better than I am, right? The world always wants you to bend the knee to them, but they refuse to come in. They won't come to our church. They won't come to your church. But they'll have you rebuke and they'll have you want to turn everything that is precious and holy in your life for you to denounce. But they will not give an inch unless the Lord opens up their heart. That's why no matter what happens, don't deny Jesus through your living and through your mouth. Don't be embarrassed because if you're embarrassed of the gospel, if you're embarrassed that you're a child of God, what it's saying to the world is you're embarrassed of Jesus. And the Word tells us, you look, you're, we're in a, you don't get up. You're in what we call a rock and a hard place. Because if you deny Jesus, you'll get the pat on the back from the world for, for a little bit. Okay? But Jesus will deny you to His Father. So that's something you got to weigh out. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of weigh into that. I'm some dumb, but I'm not plumb dumb, okay? We're not, we're not going to deny Jesus. They're just going to have to be mad, and they're going to have to call me racist or bigot or uh, uh, homophobic or whatever. They're just going to have to use those words that lost their meaning anymore, right? And so uh, we're starting to see who the racists and bigots are in the world, aren't we? I think the veil's being lifted. It's you know, but anyway, and it's it's not the child of God. But the children of God have has based, has has turned their tail and put their head and their nose and ignore ignored everything around us. But look, the enemy. The point is, the enemy has schemes for you. He has a thing to be able to destroy you. He has a plan for you. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't get tired. You do. I do, right? But thank God, if He stands before me, who can stand against me? We have the Holy Spirit with inside of us, okay? We are the temple of God. I don't have to go to some holy mountain some over here. To do it. All i got to do is say, Father, and I'm in His presence. Amen? Amen. He's my God. He's not going to leave me and forsake me. So our weapons are mighty. They are mighty to the pulling down of stronghold, Scripture tells us. Look, in verse 12 he says, Look, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against authorities, against cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Now look, does the enemy use wicked people? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely he does. He does. They allow him to be used. And when you was before you was a child of God and I was a child of God it was in our nature it was in our nature to do things and we would think that would be okay right I mean that's, that's the way it is that's your nature and but now that we have a new nature a, a, a new life right we get convicted of those things we see those things but the world doesn't and look you can say well the people in the government they're our enemies, okay? This whole recent abortion thing going on. There was this black lady uh, uh, protesting in front of a bunch of uh, pro-life people. She was insane, first of all, and she was having these all these baby dolls that was tied together with red clothes, and she was like, I'm killing my babies, and I'm killing my babies. I want to kill my babies and all this stuff like that. Now, that person is doing that. They solely believe it or they don't care. They're a wicked person. You can say, well, Brother Cain right there, obviously, that's who we're fighting against. And I could see a point in argument for that. I could. Okay? 
The enemy's using that person. The en- that person is deceived. That person needs Jesus. If they can, it, it, just like I needed Jesus before I got saved. Okay, me, I needed Jesus. I, I, I was gonna go to hell just like that person was. Now I wasn't doing things as defiled as that. It maybe, you know. Uh, but I was doing things, and it doesn't matter what I was doing. The point was I didn't have Jesus, and I was on a one-way ticket to hell. I was lost just as much, okay? But there is a spiritual world. There is a world you can't see. And that, pur- that person is being a puppet, but the, master t- the master, uh, puppet master is behind them, all right? There's a wicked authority. There's a wicked agenda in dark, heavenly places that is causing people and and influencing people to be like that. There's an enemy, a spiritual enemy, and and we can beat that kind of person. We can beat that enemy. Just because that's flesh and blood, Scripture uh, contradicts our first natures to say, that's the person I can see and that's the person that's causing the issue, let's deal with it. Got a bunch of politicians like that, don't we? And look, I'm not saying don't vote. Vote. That's our right as, as Americans. Vote. Amen. Vote with your dollars. Okay? You got if you got some sales service that hates evangelical Christians and, and, and you know you you know that and you got sales service with them, find somebody that don't hate your guts. Why would you give your money and your time and your effort to somebody that hates you? We're smarter than that. I mean, if you find out and that's the case, right? So we should do those things. Like That's things we can do in the world. If you want to protest, do it lawfully and legally. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not calling us as a church to do that. I'm focused more on spiritual things, okay? But our, our warfare, our enemy, is not flesh and blood. It is authorities in heavenly places, cosmic powers in present darkness in the heavenly places. The thing that the enemy has successfully done to the modern church is have the church think that you have no power. I'm going to give you an example. I, uh, me with th- two other people, started a, a gym, okay? start a gym and we all had our different skills and stuff like this right here and we had different things that we were doing in the in the gym okay and so I was doing the martial arts kung fu MMA stuff so I, I had guys come in and it's funny you know people see stuff on TV and they're like that's what I want to do and then they kick a bag one time and they said oh what's the next thing I'm like nah man you you did something one time, good job for you. A baby can do that. Let's do it a thousand more times and we'll talk about going to the next thing. That, most people don't like that kind of teaching. But I had this guy come in and he was the real deal, okay? He was, he went to the Citadel. He graduated from the Citadel, okay, the college. Uh, he was, I think, a light heavyweight in wrestling. He was a national champion champion in scholastic wrestling, okay, in, at the Citadel. He wrestled with people like, or new people like Brock, Brock Lesnar and stuff like that. I mean, so he's the real deal. Real muscular, uh, super athletic, a phenomenon. He's just incredible, okay? He just didn't know how to punch and kick. He's a wrestler. That's fine. I can teach you how to punch and kick, man. That's no problem. And how to combine those things. And so with that training... I mean, his, so we got it, his, his skill level was leaps and bounds above everybody else's. No one in the gym could touch him when it come to wrestling. No one. And, and for good reason, right? I mean, for good reason. And so when you're a national champion, national means all of America, okay, we got that. He's the best person in America at his weight group. That's saying a lot. Okay, <laughs> highly a uh, skill level that's above beyond. Okay, so he wanted to, to get into a ring and, and he wanted to have a match. He wanted to fight somebody. And we said, okay, so we found someone local, a local uh, tournament kind of thing, you know, they were doing. And the guy that he was going to fight, now, 
you got to understand, my guy, he had to go, everybody had to go to the doctor and get a physical and so on and so forth, put money into it and, and all that. So he's, he's hyped up, man. He has like got his mind in a different place. And the guy that he was going to fight, he looked like he, I, he looked like 150 pounds of chewed bubble gum. He walked bow-legged. I mean, he was floppy-footed, duck-footed, or whatever. He was sloppy-looking. He looked like he just rolled out of bed. I mean, he was—he couldn't hold a can. He's—it was pitiful. If I was his instructor, I'd be like, "Dude, no, you—you're not getting to a ring. Matter of fact, is this your first day? Yeah. I'm not going to have your death on my conscience." You see what I'm saying? So we've got two opponents. You've got one, my guy, who was this phenomenon. I mean, a, a pinnacle of human perfection. You know, uh, just the wonderful martial artist and, and a great guy. His mind's right, man. He's got the right energy. He's, he's ready to get some stuff done. And you've got soup sandwich over here. <laughs> Dude could barely climb up in the ring. It was pitiful. And my guy's like, he's all hunked up, hiked up, and... And, and, and he gets in there and he's, man, I got this. And he's, he's upset. And I'm like, look, man, you need to calm down. You need to get your mind right. You get your mind right. Man, I can take him. This is nothing. I can't believe he's doing this and all that. And, and I, I was like, I said, I said, man, just, you need to calm down. But see, another problem is they don't, they don't know the mental part about it, right? So my guy's just hyped up. And this other guy, so anyway, the match starts. My guy's trying to swing from the fence and knock this guy out. Just trying to lay him flat. Just a big, whoa, he wants the big knockout. Well, this other guy's scared to death. And he's ducking and weaving. And he's not like bouncing and doing like strategic stuff. He's missing these things because he's scared for his life. Well, my guy is highly talented and skilled as he was. Exhausted himself out before the first round fell on the ground, rolled over, and this other guy was so exhausted from ducking and weaving and scaring, running around the, the ring for his life, fell on the ground too, barely crawled on top of my guy and was hitting him on the head like this. Could hardly lift his hands up. He was exhausted. And guess who won the match? He did. He Soup won. Sandwich. Soup sandwich won. And... And I'm and 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 I and the guy couldn't figure it out. He could my guy. He was exalt. I mean, he was so embarrassed. He was so embarrassed, man. Humbling moment for him. And I hated that he had to learn this lesson like that. Okay. And I tried to tell him. He's like, man, I can't get it. I'm so skilled. I'm this and that. And this guy's like, I said, yeah. There is no way. No way. If everybody would have bet, you you made everybody lose a bunch of money. The soup sandwich beat you. Okay. What I'm trying to get at is that the child of God, because of the Lord and because of the, the armor that we have, the weapons of warfare that we have, we're like that guy that I know. That guy that he has such high weapons. I mean, such, such highly skilled individual. There should be no way he's losing. But his mind, his mind and not listening to good instruction. And him wanting to do his will. Him wanting to get the big knockout. The big show thing instead of winning. Okay? Well, that's how the child of God is. We're convinced that the enemy's not real. Or we believe he's real, but he's not attacking me because I'm a child of God. I'm a prince. I'm a king. And now I'm a queen. And there's no way my God would let him attack me. God doesn't want anything to happen bad to me. We're good. That's a lie. That's a Ponzi scheme. That sets you up to fail. Amen. Because you start believing, because it's easy to believe this lie. And then when the enemy has messed with your mind for so long and has made you fight your shadow for so long, and when it's time for you to finally say, and some preacher preaches to you and you say, Oh my Lord, why am I not winning my victories? Me just saying I'm victorious and I'm blessed and highly favored, that stuff ain't working. Me giving, sowing all these money seeds and all this stuff, it ain't working. You've been wanting the wrong gods, why? 
You've been wanting the favor of the wrong God. You've been, you've been believing the Ponzi scheme. You've been believing the wrong God and the wrong doctrine. There should have been no way my guy lost, but he did. There should be no way that a child of God can lose, but we do. And that's why. We don't believe it. We want to do things our way. We want to put on the armor our way. Okay? We want to believe things our way. Well, I'm close to God. Man, God's like this, man. I can just... God, you know my lost so-and-so's heart. Just, just save them. Why don't you come against that alcohol they're, they're addicted to? Why don't you come against the spirit of that addiction they're addicted to? Right? Their mindset of, of, of sexual nastiness. Why don't you come against that in the name of Jesus? Well, those things ain't real. Well, that's why... That, first of all, that's where you're failing. Right? See what I'm saying? These are different. You're going to have to pray for these things differently from the sandwich from them. I know that's a simple, easy thing, but I'm a simple person. Okay? And so, look, when we recognize and you stand up that you're in a fight, you're in a battle regardless. People, I don't want to make the devil mad. Well, then you're losing. And he's already mad at you. And he's already attacking you. You're either going to give up or, or fight. You're in a fight regardless. Look, when it's time, when you're in a fight, there's no time to think about, am I in a fight or not? You're in a fight. That's already, yeah, that's already began. That's already started. Now the only option is, are you going to survive or not survive? Are you going to be victorious or not? And victorious, having victory in your life doesn't mean everything's going your way. But when you lay hands on your baby and you declare that fever in the name of Jesus to leave, and it leaves, it's not because you did it, it's because you stood on the Word of God. Amen? Yeah. You use your spiritual authority. It says, wake up and might be powerful in the might of God, in the power of the Lord. Wake up! And when you do, when you start declaring these things in the name of Jesus, that you're not making these things up. You're not saying, because of who I am, God, I come before you in the name of Jesus. No, I come boldly because you said I can in the name of Jesus, right? Amen. So, so now, look, once I have recognized that there's an enemy and he's got schemes against me, and look, he says that um, uh, once I recognize all these things and I put on the armor of God, which is hard to do, and, and, and you don't just... I put on the helmet of salvation. I put on the breastplate. You can do that if you want to. If that helps you, I don't want to discourage that from happening. All right? But when the enemy starts messing with your mind and you've got the helmet of salvation on, what does that mean? I, I'm not, I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail about it, but the helmet of salvation, the helmet of salvation, this is where my battle is, my mind. I have to understand that I'm saved. Well, I don't feel saved. What does the Word of God say? Have you declared Jesus in your life? Yeah. Have you given your life to Him? You asked Him to forgive you for your sins? Yeah. Do you love Him? Yes. Do you want to do wrong? No. I want to do what pleases the Lord. But I still don't feel good. I don't feel saved. I don't feel like I'm the best thing in the sliced bread. Well, the helmet of salvation says you're saved. Salvation says you're saved. The Scripture says that if anyone calls on the name of Jesus, He will not turn His back on them. Amen. Yes. That supersedes your feelings. Amen. That helmet protects your mindset right there. So when, when you start feeling not saved, that's when you got to remember, I've got the helmet of salvation on. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 13, it says, When you take up the whole armor that you may be able to withstand the evil day. Meaning that if you don't take it up, you're not going to stand that evil day. Your tests and trials, no matter how much you declare it, no matter how much you uh, uh, speak it into existence, it's, you're living a lie. You're, li you're unprotected. You're unprotected. There are certain... Listen, I know I'm a martial arts guy, but this is the way I think. I've done it for 30 years. There are certain martial arts that are good for... Uh, uh, health and uh, good to teach you discipline and, and get kids involved and give them something to do and, and it's good for them, right? It's very, very good for them. But if you take that same martial arts and you put it in a street situation, 
it'll get them killed. It's not for it's not for battle. It's not to defend yourself. It's just good. Okay? It's just a good thing. Your armor, this life that you're living, as a child of God, if you're going to have any victory in your life at all, you're going to have to do spiritual warfare. And your combat, your weapons, are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Your, your weapons of warfare comes from God and from heaven. That armor you got on your head and in your chest, and that armor that you wield in your arm and that weapon that you wield in your hand, those weapons don't come from mankind. It don't come from the authority of mankind. It don't come from you. It don't come from who your daddy, your mama, your whoever it is. It doesn't come from your wealth. It comes from heaven. And God sits on the throne of heaven whose name is above every name. That's what that means. There is no authority above God's authority. His way is the right way, perfect way, and His way... Look... Everything that will work out in your life, God intends it to be good. He will take a bad situation when you stand firm and you stand strong and you don't cower and you put on the armor of God. God will turn that bad situation into your victory. He will do it. But if you crimp, if you just crumble and fall and woe is me, or you declare something that's not true, that weapon of warfare does not work for you. Because you're not using God's tools. You're not using God's authority. You're not using His authority. Okay? He says in 13, And when you take up the whole armor of God, you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all, stand. That's the hardest part right there. Stand. What does that mean? Once I put on everything, and I'm in a warfare, and I'm, I'm, we're, we're doing spiritual warfare one night, and uh, uh, we've got sicknesses happening all in our church, and we start in the name of Jesus. We come boldly before the throne of God. God, we stand against all sicknesses and infirmities in the name of Jesus in our church. We declare, God, you, declare, you, you have given us the authority over sicknesses and disease, Lord. We stand against the enemy. We rebuke him in the name of Jesus. That is spiritual warfare. I'm not asking the devil. I'm telling the devil. I'm not asking God to say, Lord, God's already said this is yours. Use it. I'm not going to have to say, Lord, can I use this now? No, he said, why ain't you using this? Why aren't you using this? And then once you declare it in faith, stand. Watch. I declare it. Am I coming to prayer? Why am I coming to prayer? What am I expecting? I'm expecting mighty things to happen. When I come to church, I'm expecting mighty things to happen. Why? Because I'm all that in a bag of chips? Negative. I'm not. I'm expecting the King of Kings to be here. I'm expecting His power and His authority to be here. Because that's what I'm preaching from, not me. That's why we're here. That's why we open up our mouths. That's why I say, this is a give me. This is a praise you. Okay? This is a, all about me. This is all about you. Which one you think is going to get God's attention first? In the name of Jesus and His authority. That's what spiritual warfare is about. 30 steps to how to achieve spiritual warfare. This right here is what you need. This is what you need right here. Stand. After you've done all, stand. After you've done all, stand. He says, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, that scripture, the belt of truth holds everything together, the breastplate of righteousness, and having your shoes uh, for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel. What do you think when I say, when I, I declare our church to be uh, one of its missions are to raise disciples? Our job as disciples, with your gifts and your calling, your personality, who God has made you, is to one end, is to spread the gospel. Okay? Christian, this is what I'm saying. If you want to if you want to hurt a soldier, you can train, you can spend a million dollars, a million and a half dollars training a Navy SEAL. You take away those $40 boots and throw him in a jungle somewhere, you've basically thrown all that away. You take away the shoes from any army, you've, you've crippled them. Probably literally. Okay? And so as disciples, this whole 
I want you to know your gifts. I want you to know your calling. I want you to, don't worry about how many people we got coming in our church right now. I want you to focus on God. I want you to uh, build yourself up and when we build it, God will have them come, okay? This, what I'm doing is, and what this church is doing is, is helping you to put on the shoes for the readiness of the gospel. Because if I put, say, all right, now you're saved. Let's go out there and win a bunch of people. You, you're going to have to run on the streets and everything. Guess what? You're not going to run far and fast at all, are you? And you're going to get stone bruises on your foot, and you're going you're gonna to stop. It's going to be a short run. <laughs> so that's what we're doing in our church, and that's what every child of God should do in, our, in, 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 their, in their church. Make disciples, Jesus said. Not just converts, make disciples. He says, look, in all situations, 16, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Now, this right here covers all prayer. Why? If I'm praying for my food, if even though I receive it with thanksgiving, if I don't believe that God is real, and I don't have faith that God is real, even if I receive it with thanksgiving, it's not sanctified. So the very only way to please God without faith, it's impossible to please God. You know what Scripture says? So that's why the shield of faith is, covers everything. It covers your all things. Okay? If I'm praying for my food, I've got to have faith. If I'm praying just to open up service, I've got to have faith. If I'm praying doing spiritual warfare, uh, you know, wanting, uh, uh, praying for someone's salvation or uh, uh, circumstances to change in the spirit world because there will be a reaction. It ripples out. Things change in the spirit world, world first and then in the, in the physical world it will happen. If, if, put it this way. If you want your life to change first, you need to pray in the spirit. You need to pray and when that spirit changes, your flesh will change. That's always a good thing. If you feed the flesh, it's the opposite effect. If you feed your flesh, what usually happens to your spirit? It weakens. Right? Amen? Right? I'm staying out of church all the time. Guess what? Next week, it's going to be easy to stay out of church. For too long, you're wondering why you even never go to church. It's okay to watch church online. And before then, you'll say, I don't need to watch church online. I'm good. Man, the Lord's like this. That's what happens. That's what happens. But if you do it in the spirit realm, it works the opposite. So first thing i got to do is have faith in all situations. So see, that covers both kinds of prayers. All kinds of prayers. Don't matter what kind of prayer it is. I have to have faith first. And why? what's, what's, what's the fiery darts about? Fire sends panic. The enemy wants you to be in a panic all the time. He wants you to be worried all the time. He wants you to be worried about what other people think about you. He wants people worried about your job. He wants you to be worried about your job all the time, about what you're going to eat all the time, about uh, who's talking about you, uh, about how you look, your weight, your your, your hair, your, all the what people think about you online, which I want to throw up. You know, people put everything they eat online and all this stuff and. Oh, I'm, this is my whole life, and this is what I did today. Nobody cares. I would, if you're listening, if you just happen to tune in, let me. Do, I, I love you out of love. No one really cares, and when the people says you go girl or you go boy, they don't care. They could not care less about you. That is a social pat on the back. That's a all. Oh. That's what that is. That's a all. Oh. It's condescending. It's a condescending. It, it doesn't matter. Look, look. What's, it's, it, the enemy sends stuff to... That's what the fiery darts was about. Because fire always sends panic. It's in our nature to send panic, right? Fire spreads. It don't stay contained unless you put it in something to be contained in, right? And so the enemy has fiery darts that come in your life and one thing can spread. If you're worried about what people think about you, if you if you get in your head about that, man, before long, you'll be crippled in your house in the corner. You won't be able to function in society. You sure won't have faith. You sure won't have any kind of spiritual uh, victory. That's off the menu. You can forget that. 
That's not going to happen, right? But the shield of faith, the shield of faith, what is faith? Is confidence in God. That's what that is. The shield of faith is about having confidence. Because if you have it, if you handed me a sh if someone was shooting an arrow at me and you handed me a shield that was made out of cardboard about an eighth of an inch thick and said, man, that's a shield right there, I'd say, you hold it. <laughs> you hold it, cuz. Let me see yeah. your great faith. Yeah. But if you had a 15 inch stainless steel 30 foot by 50 foot wall, I'm standing behind that thing all day long. You go ahead and shoot that little Dollar General air at me, buddy. It ain't going to do nothing. See, what, where's, my, where's the confidence at, though? Where, where am I getting my confidence at? Am I, am I confidence in the cardboard or is it in the big, thick stainless steel? So it's not in about me, is it? As long as I'm behind that shield, I'm good. I'm golden. The good, the right shield. But this name it, claim it mess, and this I'm God, and you can speak things in existence. People are standing in front of the fiery darts with a, a, a kerosene soaked little cardboard shield, and they're getting caught on fire, and their life is full of flames and confusion. And they're thinking they're doing right, and they're being lied to by doctrines of devils and wolves and sheep clothing. That's why I hate it so much. That's why God hates it. He wants you to be strong in the real deal. The faith comes, the, the assurance comes from who the, what the shield is, what it's made out of, and who it comes from. That's what the fiery darts is about. All those things, that shield that you're holding, it stops. Well, that whole thought, how many of you ever had God doesn't love you no more? I mean, that's, that's a no, every Christian's ever had that. If they hadn't, they're lying or they're not Christians. That's just the way it is. That's a fiery dart. And that thing can spread, and it can spread all your life. But when I have that helmet of salvation on, and I have my faith, you know what? It doesn't matter how I feel. I trust in the Lord. The Lord made this covenant without me. He didn't need my help to make it. He doesn't need my help to keep it. He is God. My trust is in Him, period. I need Him. He don't need me. He is God and I am not. He is and I am something made out of dirt and water. That is my confidence. That right there knocks that fiery dart out of the water. He says, you're not worthy. Oh, duh. I know I'm not worthy. Good job. Yeah. He is. The one who has called me is faithful and able to keep me. That's what Scripture says. Why? Because His throne is in heaven. He is God. The fiery darts, you've got to watch them. And it's easy to sneak up in your life because you don't realize they're really happening. Not at first. In all circumstances, take up your shield of faith. Ever, with all kinds of prayer. Take up your helmet of salvation. Okay? Take up your sword, which is the Spirit. Here again, he's reiterating. You're, 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 don't take your guns up. Don't, don't pick your guns up and try to change society. Okay? You, you, everybody knows that. Oh, everybody's got any sense, especially Christians. Okay? Our weapon, is, our weapon and our warfares are spiritual. Our battles are spiritual. When we fix it and we win it in the Spirit, the, the, the natural world will react to the spiritual world. It will happen. That person that is pulling out fake babies and acting like she's killing her babies, if the, if the children of God, instead of throwing up protests, would start praying against stuff like this and start praying against the culture that makes that right there, that will change. Period. That will change. That right there shows me that the church of God, the church in general, God's people, have neglected spiritual warfare. We've catered and want to make people happy and make them feel welcomed and comfortable in our churches and bend the knee and make them change the way we paint our walls and our worship service and our music and how we read scriptures and the things we say. Yeah, that weakens you. That takes and strips your armor away. That takes and strips your weapons of warfare away. That sets you on fire. That makes you weak. That makes you lose. The Spirit of God. That the star sword is the Spirit, which is what? Oh, what I declare it. No, it is this Word of God. When I when I praying for my sick baby, I don't do it because me and God's tight. I don't declare things. I don't rebuke the enemy because me and God are. Uh, he 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 loves me and he calls me by my name. 
That's wonderful. That's great. That's more than I deserve. But what I do is I declare it because I know it's in Scripture. He has given me authority over sicknesses and over diseases. And, and, and look, when I declare those things, the power is His to clean them and to make them work and to fix them. That's His power. What is mine is to stand by faith and have confidence that I have, in, I have stood. Once I've done all, I've declared it, I've stood, and I will watch the glory of God happen. I will watch the Spirit change in the world change. That's what I'll watch. That's what will happen. Doing it backwards. People are doing it backwards. Christians are doing it backwards. Okay? Our weapons are spiritual. It's by Scripture. By Scripture. And then he says, look, in verse 18, and I, I'm, I'm about done. He says, praying at all times. This is with all prayer. So see, you could say, that's why somebody says well, when we pray, we're doing spiritual warfare. I'm not going to argue. I'm, when we pray for our food, we're doing spiritual warfare. I'm not, I, I, okay, I'm in it. We're in a battle. If it, Look, these people that are in a, in a firefight, when they stop to eat lunch or eat dinner or use the bathroom or take a nap or wash themselves, the battle don't stop. They're still in a fight, right? They're still in a fight. So no, if someone, someone says, well, everything, every prayer that we pray is spiritual warfare. I could say, okay. All right, I'm not going to argue with that. Man. It don't bother. That's just splitting hairs. It's fine. As long as you've got faith and you're, you're sincere about what you're praying, you're praying in Scripture, hey, whatever. But I do have issue when people say, this prayer that you read what so-and-so said and you quote, this, you quote what they said, that's, that's spiritual warfare. You know, the enemy quotes Scripture, right? He quoted it to Jesus, didn't he? Yeah. He knows the Bible way better than we do. Okay? Did it affect Jesus? No. No. Why? Because he didn't have... A, basically, he was misquoting it. Okay? He doesn't have authority over Jesus. Jesus is the Word. Okay? And so, my, my, my point is, is that you can read what somebody else says, but if you don't have any faith, then it's void in your life. There's all the power stripped out of it for you. Yeah. All the power stripped out of it. Okay? Because why? The shield of faith. In all things, the shield, that, that covers everything. Okay? So, at all times, with all prayer, in the Spirit, whether I'm praying, uh, I'm praying in tongues or I'm praying uh, you know, by faith in, in the Spirit world, things that are broken in the spirit world, the fight that's going on, the skirmish that's going on in the spirit world that I can't see, I'm praying in the spirit. With all prayer, whether I'm praying, Lord, keep me safe at night, keep my, my wife when she was out of town, Lord, I'm praying for her safety and for her, yeah, okay, with all prayer, with all supplications, praying for other people, interceding with all them. No matter what prayer you're praying, he says, to that end, to that end, keep alert, be looking, have your head on a swivel. With all perseverance, make, make it important in your life. Okay? Make it important in your life. Making supplications for all the saints. We need to remember our brothers and sisters everywhere. Not just where we are. And this right here, I want you to remember for me. He says, and also for me, that the words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mysteries of the gospel. If you want a strong pastor, pastor needs strong people praying for him. I will grow and my words will have more anointing. I will grow and I'll be led by the Spirit if you're praying and you're doing battle for me. And you're helping me. Okay? Because if the apostle is saying pray for me that I will open up my mouth boldly, and this thing right here needs you to do more. Pray for me. Okay? Why? Not that I can have mansions and, and, and jets and, and have celebrity fame and all that nonsense stuff that just destroys people anyway, but that I can open up my mouth boldly and speak the truth. Because truth and boldness in the truth is the greatest enemy of the world right now. They want you to kowtow to them. They want you to bend the knee. They want you to say what they say is right and you accept them. And if you don't, you're a bad person. I don't get my value from them. I don't get my self-worth from the world. I don't get... I, look, if you like what I... I don't put nothing on the internet anyway. Uh, but if, if... 
if you don't like me, I might not like that, and I wish people liked me and stuff. As long as the right people like me, I'm good. As long as they love me, I'm good. Okay? Everybody, now, I, I don't care what nobody thinks. That's a lie. You care about what somebody thinks. Yeah. But I don't care about likes. What I care about is being able to speak the truth in boldness because the truth is what sets people free. And the unwatered down <laughs> truth, even if it hurts, even if it steps on your toes and it hurts my feelings and everybody's feelings and we're at the altar crying and boo-hoo and get up, let's be adults, let's say, okay, God, thank you for loving me enough to tell me the truth. Don't you appreciate it when somebody comes up and says, looks at you and says, hey, you got a little something right there. <laughs> it, it makes you feel embarrassed for a little bit, don't it? It makes you feel like, like <clears throat> okay. But, oh, gosh, yeah, yeah, that thing's like like a slag tight or whatever, and it's hanging out. But it makes it makes you feel good after a while, right? You're like, man, I'm glad they love me enough to tell me. You know, that's dumb. I'm dumb. I'm dumb sometimes. I'm sorry. But look, <laughs> pray for your pastor, all right? Do spiritual warfare on my behalf, and I do it on your behalf, okay? This is all, I'll watch your back, you watch my bike back kind of thing. We're in a foxhole together until Jesus comes back. The Calvary's coming back, okay? Amen. But we got to win, we got to take some ground, we got to maintain while he's here, we got to do what, we got when he comes back to show him, Lord, we wasn't just sitting on our hands. We, we were doing something for you. We, we were, because of love, Lord, we are doing it. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love y'all. Thank y'all for y'all attention. Uh, uh, are, are we do you have a more understanding about what the difference between the prayers are yes. okay uh, so when, when uh, the deacons say we're going to do spiritual warfare I don't want y'all being uh, confused okay uh, now if they're saying we're going to do spiritual warfare over our food then <laughs> come tell me I'm going to sit them down and say, who do we have to worry about trying to poison us? <laughs> right? Amen? Amen? I need to know because I love to eat. Alright? Yes, I, uh, I, I don't want to tempt God either. So, homeboys over there trying to kill us, we need to know what's going on. Right? But, but when we're praying for the church, growth of our church, that's a spiritual warfare because we're trying to change things in the spirit against the enemy that doesn't want it to happen. Amen? Amen? Uh, and, and trust in the Lord. Don't don't be don't be so burdened down by titles. I had a bad situation happen at church when I was young. I mean, uh, at, at work when I was a young Christian, and I prayed uh, every day when I got home. I went into my prayer closet. I prayed, and I just unloaded on God all the time. And that's good. That's good. I, I do it now. When I go to do it, I unload everything. But I went in there thinking I'm going to do spiritual warfare and I'm going to rebuke this. My boss is wanting to fire me and wanting to do all this stuff and I'm working hard and I don't see what's going on and I, 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 I'm doing everything right, I, I thought, right? And I was doing good, no doubt, at the time. And, uh, and I'm praying and praying and I was so mad. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to, I'm going to do some spiritual warfare. Boy, I'm going to tear down some strongholds. Man, I'm furious. Furious, and I get in there, and you know what happens? God showed me where I'm wrong. Okay? Where I'm wrong. Guess what happened? God, yeah, we did some spiritual warfare on my behalf. God corrected me. And because of that, I didn't go in there and say, well, I didn't do spiritual warfare, so nothing changed. I went in there with the attitude of, I want to do spiritual warfare. I went in with the attitude of, this is what I'm doing. But God did something else. And he, we did spiritual warfare, but he changed me. I was the issue. I, there was something he was trying to teach me, okay? And when, when I learned it, he, oh, he just fixed everything else. I mean, there's no question. He just said, and it was like this day and night flip. It was a like, punk changed. Everything changed like that. When I said, I'm sorry, Lord. I, I mean, I was humble. I'm sorry, Lord. He said, changed just like that. No questions asked. So... That's, you know, uh, so when we go to do 
when you in your life is thinking, man, I've got this problem I'm going to deal with. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to bust do some spiritual warfare. Go in there with that attitude. But, you know, but if God says, hey, let's look at you. Yeah. Don't say, no, but I'm here to do spiritual warfare, God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It begins first. Judgment begins in the house of God. It begins with you first. You see what I'm saying? So God will always require you. He need, You need to look in the mirror, spiritually speaking. Okay? But uh, when we come corporately together, and we say we're going to do spiritual warfare, or we're going to do, we got this subject we're going to do. We're going to venture into doing a new ministry. Let's just say uh, something like at Christmas time or something. That needs to be saturated and covered ground with spiritual warfare. Amen. You see what I mean? Okay, good. So if you would please stand up. Thank you. Thank you for being here today and. Uh, give me your full attention. I appreciate that. And dealing, and, uh, dealing with me. Thank you. Uh, but let's just pray. Father, Lord, I love you. I thank you for this time that we've been together. Lord, thank you for the truth of your word. I pray that you would bless everyone here, Father, that you would bless the people online that's watching it now and that's going to watch it in the future. Lord, that the truth of the gospel just encourage them, open them up, God, strengthen them, Lord, and if some people believe in the name it, claim it stuff and all this, Lord, that they would see the falsehood of it, that you would open up their hearts, God, and that you, you want them to have true power. You want them to walk in true victory, not some false uh, delusion that they're walking in a true victory. God, give them peace. Give them um, strength. Let the light of your gospel shine in them. Deliver them, strengthen them, God. Bless our homes, our marriages. Lord, bless our church, our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, whoever we have, Father. I pray that you would keep them safe, Father. And, Lord, that you would use us to spread the gospel, use us to grow uh, other disciples, Lord, and help us, Lord. I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you. Amen.